freeze warning, freeze warning. Um, in southeast Georgia, Chili Willie has left town and Jack Frost has showed up. It has got cold <laughs> in South Georgia. Uh, we're not really used to this type of coldness. Uh, you know, as I was coming to the church here, you see in the background today, I was coming to check on our outside water spigots and uh, a few inside that we had to leave dripping yesterday, uh, yesterday afternoon, so, you know, we wouldn't get any frozen busted pipes and uh, kind of let the water drip and uh, uh, just coming to recheck on them today here on this Christmas Eve 2022. And as I'm approaching God's house here to check on, you know, like I said, the dripping spigots. Um, I uh, I was thinking about tonight, you know, my phone showed, you know, another freeze warning. And I kept hearing that word freeze warning, freeze warning. And I heard the Holy Ghost speak to me and he said, uh, he said, Marvin, there's been a freeze warning in my word concerning the end times. My son, your savior, Jesus, he warned us about a time of indifference, a coldness spiritually that is going to happen just before he returns again. In Matthew 24, the Bible records it, verses 12, Jesus is preaching. He said, the love of many shall wax cold because sin and iniquity is abounding. Abounding means it's becoming more acceptable. Sin is. That that is unrighteous, that that is unholy, that that is wicked, the dark. Sadly, many in the modern church are even getting used to the dark. Not just the world. Not just darkness covering the world, but as Isaiah 60 verses 2 say, in gross darkness covering the people. It's not just the darkness in the world. It's the darkness, the blindness, the deception that the people have now accepted. And uh, uh, we see this happening all the way from top offices in our nation all the way down to the church house. Uh, so all uh, darkness is covering the face of the people. And... Jesus said, because iniquity is abounding, it's now widely acceptable. Um, he said the love of many is going to wax cold. This don't just mean the love people have one to another, but it means, first of all, their love that they show toward their creator, the Lord God, the Lord Jesus himself. Because 2 Timothy chapter 3, the Bible tells us in the word of the Lord, in verses 2, that they would love themselves more than they would love God. It didn't say they wouldn't love God a little bit. It just says they'll love themselves more than they love God. Some would call this narcissism. You know, someone who's uh, selfish, uh, self-seeking, self-serving. But the Bible just calls it pride, calls it loving you more than you love God. And the reason people stop loving each other is because they fell out of love with God. They've become cold and indifferent in their passion. They no longer have a passion displayed, you know, for their creator, for his house, his work, the things of his kingdom. The world is more important to them than his kingdom is. And and Jesus said, because of this, the love of many is going to wax cold. Wax just means it's going to grow cold. They're going to become frozen spiritually. Yeah, you know, with, with no fervency. So you're either going to be froze or you're going to be fervent spiritually when it concerns the faith. And some people are chilling out instead of getting fired up. They're allowing the spiritual freeze that's been taking place in our nation and in this world in these last times. And sadly, in the modern church, people are getting used to the cold. Sadly, some are catching the cold. I'm not talking about some bug, some virus or anything like that. I'm talking about a spiritual cold. They're catching the cold and, and they're, they've, they've, they're falling away. The Bible calls it apostasy. Second Thessalonians two and three says, let no man deceive you by any means. That day will not come except there first be a falling away. What day? The day when the Lord returns, the day <clears throat> of the end. God says that day won't come except there first be a falling away. And again, the word falling away means apostasy. The word apostasy also means offended. Jesus said in the same chapter we're quoting from in Matthew 24, we just quoted verse 12, 
he declared in verses 10, many shall be offended. He says in verses 11, many shall follow after false prophets. So we see in the hour we live, the apostasy is based on offended opinions. That's why Romans 125 said they changed the truth of God into a lie. And they worship the creature rather than the creator. They worship their opinions. They become humanistic in their approach toward God. And they make God their graven image, breaking the second of the Ten Commandments found in Exodus 20 verses 4. And so they make up their own God. They make up what they call truth and what they define as truth. And then they change it. And by verse 26 and 27 of Romans 1, we find women are turned over to vile unclean affections, lustful affections, and women with women, and then men leaving the natural use of a woman burn, not in love, but in lust one for another, men with men working or doing that sexually which is unseemly, despicable, abominable, receiving even in themselves the recompense of the era of their way. God calls it era. And so we see because men begin to change the truth of God into a lie, they're cold spiritually that do not no longer know this God and they've worshipped their only opinion of what they call truth and they've changed the truth into a lie and they've made God their opinion their opinion has become their God and now they have a graven image of what they call God and in this we see people's sexual appetites changing confusion men wanting to be women women wanting to be men Men wanting to have some type of what they would call sex with man, but there's no same sex with the same sex. That's not sex. Uh, sex is only between a man, a male, and a woman, a female. And so people begin to have the gross darkness cover them. Why? This is the freeze warning. Jesus gave us a freeze warning. He sure did. He said, because iniquity abounds, it's becoming more widely acceptable. Deception. The truth is being changed into a lie. Don't make it a lie, though. They change it to one. See, we don't change the truth. The truth, the truth is supposed to change us. And so that's how deception comes about. And because of this, people begin to sexually burn in their lust for not the opposite sex, but for the same sex. And we see all these homosexual, lesbianism, transgender movements, and people who can't even define what a woman is, much less what a baby is in the inside of a womb. So we see all this freeze warning Jesus warned about. And he said all this in light of his second coming. And people are offended, offended. They're apostatizing. They're falling away. They're falling away from the truth, and they're following the false prophets. They're following the ones that want to you know, appease them and please them and, and give them the message they want to hear. And so we see this in Matthew 24, verse 10 and verses 11. And then by verses 12, here's the freeze warning. Jesus said, because iniquity abounds, the love of many shall wax cold. Again, not just love for one another, but their love for God. Because it forms the cross until we love him. How can we love each other? How can we love them? Think about it. So people's fallen away from him. They, he's no longer their first love. Revelation 2, 4, Jesus told the church you know, at, at, at Ephesus, he said, I have somewhat against you. You've left your first love. I'm no longer the most important one in your life. Yeah. You know, as we celebrate Christmas, Joseph had a dream. His dream was not the American dream. He didn't even dream of genie. In Matthew 1, 20 and 21, he dreamed of Jesus because Gabriel appeared to him in a dream and said, don't be afraid to marry Mary because that which conceived in her is of the Holy Ghost. And you'll call his name Jesus. Wow. And he'll save his people. Listen to this. From their sin. How in the world can we celebrate a Savior being born of a virgin womb, laid in a manger in Bethlehem, 33 years later, dying on the cross, three days later after that, raised from the dead. And the one who came is soon to come again. How can we preach this Christmas gospel and not make the mention of why he came and bring up the topic of sin? Yeah. Even some of your old Christmas songs mention it. As you know, 
come let us adore him. And then, and then I think it's in that song they talk about, you know, the world was lying in sin, air pining. Yeah. Until he appeared and the soul felt its worth. That's old holy night. Yeah. Come let us adore him, but that's old holy night. That's some of the lyrics from old holy night. They bring up in sin and they call it era pining until he appeared and the soul felt its worth. And then it says, fall on your knees. Oh, hear the angels sing. Oh, night, oh, night divine. Oh, holy night when Christ was born. Praise God. Think about it. I'm, I'm, I'm telling you, freeze warning, freeze warning. Jesus goes on right here in verse 13 of Matthew 24 before we close. And he said these words. He that endures to the end, the same shall be saved. Endureth to the end. What's that mean? He that stays passionate, hot, fervent, on fire for me until I come again. Him, that's the one that's going to be saved. Yeah, that's the one that's going to be rapture ready. The one that's going to be caught up when Jesus comes again. He's not coming to be laid in a crib. He's not coming to be nailed to a cross. He's coming in the sky with great power and glory. Matthew 27 or, or uh, Luke 21, 27 declares. So friend, hear the Holy Ghost today. Jesus said many are going to be offended. Many are going to follow the false prophets. They're going to follow the message of opinions instead of the message of his absolute unadulterated truth. They're, they're going to be those who are falling away, falling out of love with him. He'll be no longer their first love. He said their love for him and others is going to wax cold, going to grow cold. There's a freeze warning. But then he didn't stop. He said, but he that endureth to the end, the same shall be saved. Endureth just means he that endures the fiery trials and stays on fire for me and stays passionate hot for me that don't allow nothing to make him cold and indifferent and make me his ex-love because if he ain't your first love he's your ex-love but keeps me first until the end those are the ones that's going to be saved they're going to be caught up when i come they're going to be the ones raptured they're going to be the ones ready hallelujah when i come again so there's some that's going to endure because Jesus said, but he that endures to the end, are you going to be one that endures, that stays on fire for God, that stays hot flaming for Jesus? Are you going to be froze? Or are you going to be, you know, a flame? Froze or flame? Think about it. Freeze warning. Freeze warning. Hear the Holy Ghost on December 24th, 2022, this Christmas Eve. And no matter when this is watched in the future, whether it's at the season where we celebrate Christ's birth or if it's in the middle of July when this is watched, it don't matter if it's years from now, you know, 10 years from now, whenever this is watched, no matter the date I just said, this word is for now. This word is for the present. It is a freeze warning. Friend, don't become cold and indifferent. Don't let your passion for Jesus be chilled. Come on, you don't need to chill out. You need to get fired up. Why? Because the Bible said in Job chapter 5, verse 7, as heat or as sparks fly upward. Friend, the Bible's clear. In the oldest book in the Bible, the book of Job, again, chapter 5, verse 7, he said sparks fly upward, meaning heat rises. Yeah, yeah, the Bible's had it right all along. And friend, Jesus is not coming back for a cold girlfriend that occasionally, seasonally comes to God's house. You know, no, no, no. He's not coming back for a dater. He's not coming back. For a little cold, chilly, you know, little have a little fling on Sunday every now and then, you know, a uh, girlfriend. He's coming back for a bride that's been washed in the blood of his side, that is committed to him and that's on fire for him. In the Bible, the Bible's very clear during the Passover. The Passover lamb was instituted in Exodus chapter 12. God gave it to Moses. And uh, and we know Jesus Christ, our Passover, was sacrificed for us, 1 Corinthians 5, 7. So this is nothing but a foreshadow, a type of Jesus the Lamb, what he was going to, you know, do for us as he was sacrificed as the Lamb of God to take away the sins of the world, John 1, 29. And in Exodus chapter 12, verses 8 and 9, God told them when they prepared the Lamb, he said, whatever you do, don't water the Lamb down. In other words, don't serve it up cold and watered down. He said, roast it with fire. Friend, Jesus is the Lamb of God. And he does not deserve to be served cold. Matter of faith, you not serving him if you're cold concerning faith in him. No, no, no. If you've chilled out in your faith, freeze warning, freeze warning. Jesus is coming. Jesus is coming. And the cold are going to be left behind. And surely the lukewarm are too. 
Friend, you better get on fire because heat rises. And when Jesus comes and the trumpet sounds, the cold ain't going to rise. The lukewarm ain't going to rise. Only the hot for God. He ain't coming back for a cold girlfriend. He's coming back for a hot bride. Freeze warning. Freeze warning. Freeze warning. Hallelujah. You better get in his house. You better get about the Father's business. Amen. Luke 2, 49, Jesus was 12 years old and told his mother. He said, I'm about the Father's business. Where did she find him at when she had lost him? He was in the temple in the house of God. You're not about God's business if you're not in God's house. That is God's business. He does all his business right here from his houses, wherever his houses are. Amen. So, friend, it's time to get fired up. Don't you chill out. Freeze warning, freeze warning. Jesus is coming and heat rises. You better get on fire for God. The God who came and was wrapped in swaddling clothes over 2,000 years ago in Bethlehem's manger. He's coming again, not wrapped in swaddling clothes, not as an infant, but in great power and glory. And he is coming, Revelation 19. He is coming to judge and make war. His name is faithful and his name is true. He's not coming to be laid in a crib or be nailed to a cross. He's coming in the clouds. Yes, he is with great power and glory. So it's time to get on fire for God because heat rises. This is the freeze warning from Pastor Marvin Booth right here at Acts 29, Church Under God in Waycross, Georgia. 2913 Albany Avenue. Again, Waycross, Georgia. You can log on to MarvinBoothMinistries.com. The second page is dedicated to our church. You can give securely there. The first, there's about six pages, seven pages to our website. Make sure to scroll through them. The home page is uh, our personal ministry. And the third page is our personal ministry when we travel and go out of town and do revivals and uh, pastor appreciations, homecomings, etc. But the second page on MarvinBoothMinistry.com is dedicated totally to Acts 29 Church of God, Inc. or Incorporated. You can give securely there. And uh, you can also log on to, you know, the Cash App system, the Cash App, uh, to give to Acts 29 church under God. The cash app is the cash symbol. It's Acts 29 church, all capitalized. The cash symbol, Acts 29 church. Praise the Lord. And uh, Or you can come and do the best thing, you know, as far as giving. You can give in person. You can give an offering place. We're here every Sunday morning and every Sunday night and every Thursday night. Sunday morning, 10 a.m., 11 a.m., and Sunday night at 6 p.m. Thursday nights at 7.30 p.m. And this coming Sunday, the Lord's Day, which happens to be Christmas, which is tomorrow, December 25th, 2022, at 11 a.m., we'll be right here in this sanctuary. Sunday, Christmas. It's not Christmas Sunday. It's Sunday, Christmas, because it's Sunday before it's Christmas. And so we're going to be in the Lord's house like the Magi did in Matthew 2, 11, two years after he was born. He was now a young child. The Bible said in verses 11 of Matthew 2, they entered into the house and they fell down and worshiped the young child Jesus. He weren't in a crib in a manger scene, you know, with a barn. This is two years after his birth. He's a young child, not an infant. And the real wise worshipers, it said they came into his house. And that's where they worshiped him and opened up their treasures and presented unto him gifts of gold, frankincense, and mirth. Praise God. They came into the house. So what better place to be on Christmas Sunday? when it falls December 25th on a Sunday. Wow, like it has this year, 2022, than to be in his house. Praise God. Come and see the works of the Lord. He's awesome in his doings toward the children of men. Psalm 66 and 5. Hallelujah. This is the freeze warning. And uh, don't forget to wrap your pipes tonight. Praise God if you live in this area. And uh, drip your faucets. Praise God. Make sure you got some of that antifreeze in your radiators. Oh, uh, yeah, and your vehicles. Praise God. I was doing all that yesterday, checking up on all that stuff. Amen. Praise the Lord God. So, uh, heat rises. Get ready. Jesus is coming. Get on fire. Get on fire. Get on fire because heat rises. Freeze warning. Freeze warning.